Hello, welcome back to a new video. Today I thought it would be fun to go and do a little bit of a try on in Cos and in Uniqlo. It has been a while since I've done any videos as part of my Come Shop With Me series, basically where I go into stores and I review some of the new season items. So hopefully for those of you who are on the hunt for some new season basics to add to your wardrobe, or just looking for something interesting, you'll find this video really helpful. I'll talk through sizing, whether or not I think it's worth it, the quality, the fit, etc. What I will probably do is a voiceover for the try on section of the video because it's very hard to talk over the in-store music. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that'll be really helpful. I will link everything that I try on down in the description box below. Uh, but yeah, let's get going. <laughs> First up was Cos, whose collections I'm always curious to check out as they tend to do great basics with a modern twist. First thing I grabbed was this cotton poplin shirt that I mentioned in my last wardrobe wishlist video. This has voluminous sleeves and a really interesting button detail at the collar where half the buttons are exposed. I am wearing a size up from my usual here so it felt like a bit much fabric for me, but the actual shirt is lovely. Feels elevated, special and the pinstripe is very classic. Also like that it looks good worn loose and tucked. Versatility is key. The cotton has structure, but it wasn't starchy. One I'd recommend more for those who are taller or else size down if you're petite as the volume may feel overwhelming otherwise. This one is 100% cotton and retails for 115 Australian dollars. Next up, this deep cobalt blue v-neck knit. A little reminiscent in cut to one I have from the Korean brand Nothing Written. This has a thick ribbing at the collar, cuffs and hem. It's quite a boxy, oversized fit, which I think looks especially chic with a tailored trouser or worn loose with a pleated skirt. Almost cocoons in at the hem. I thought that this was nice and it's 100% wool. I love the color, but it's very textural and maybe scratchy if you have particularly sensitive skin. I'm wearing a size small and this retails for $150. This is such a dupe for a men's knit vest from Jill Sander. Designed to be worn with a v-neck in the front, it's cut quite low. The length is also longer than I was expecting in person, though it does look nice when worn loose. You can also see that the armholes are quite generous, as is the overall fit. I'm wearing a size small here, but you could easily size down. It's also a bit sheer, so you can see my bralette peeking through the fabric. This might be a bit of a non-negotiable for some people. The detail I love is the crochet stitching on the shoulder seams. This is really special, looks particularly chic when it's worn back to front, but I can see this snagging quite easily. Here's a close-up of the fabric. It's a cotton poly blend and this retails for $135. Drop waist dresses tend to elongate my already long torso, but I couldn't resist trying this dress on. I'm sure you can understand why, but it was for me a total flop. The sizing is really generous. I'm wearing the extra small here and there's still a lot of excess fabric at the waist which creates this pocket effect that I didn't love. I would suggest sizing down too as these styles look best when they're fitted so you might want to go down two sizes if you like this style. Also, where the end of the smocking and the start of the skirt met, it created this little pouch effect around my stomach. And again, this was not something that I was into. The ties are adjustable, it has pockets, and I really like the drama of the smocking paired with the skirt. The quality is really nice as I'd expect, but it was the cut that let this item down for me. This is one of those things that would look great on someone who is really, really tall. 100% cotton poplin and this retails for $175. The other dress I tried on was a wool knit t-shirt style, which again was just not doing me any favors. Didn't have a lot of luck in the dress department. My shoes, which I was wearing for ease here, didn't really help matters. This needs to be styled up, maybe with tights and knee-high boots. Boots. A very specific kind of look and I crave versatility with my clothes so that alone would make this a no for me. The fabric was also a little bit too textured for my liking especially against my bare skin. You can see it's cut quite boxy and large so if you were expecting this would be a really roomy option if you wanted to wear something comfortable. This is 100% wool and retails for $175. Final item I tried on at COS were these ivory cord trousers. I really like these in theory, but there's a few things to note. They cut on the large side, so I found that despite wearing them in a 34, I'm a true size eight by the way, there was so much room at the waist, not to mention that they're a little bit sheer, so you can actually see the outline of my knickers peeking through, though I was wearing black here, so really putting these to the test. That's not a deal breaker, but I just wanted to mention it. 
Otherwise, these do feel nice on and the cord itself is quite thin, which makes them a really nice transitional style option, especially if you live in a warmer climate. These are 100% cotton and they retail for $135. My next up is Uniqlo, which is basically the king of basics in every single color. I didn't find as much to try on here, but I did try on this little shirt from the Inez de la Frassage collaboration. This is quite thick and it has a beautiful quilted lining. There was something that kept throwing me off though, and I think it's the length. I'd ideally wear this type of item as a shirt and it's quite cropped, which feels counterintuitive to my preferred styling. I'm wearing the size small and you can see it's quite a boxy fit. I think this would be really great on someone who was petite and had more of that gamine style figure. I love the lining and the cobalt blue interior cuff detail. It's so sweet. This is cotton with a poly blend lining and retails for $130. Then I tried on these flat front trousers with elastic at the back of the waist. This is such a genius move, just like those cos pants, as they look tidy and professional for the front, but they're not restrictive. They also have pockets. These are wide through the leg and will be a good option for working from home when you want to look like you've put in effort, but you haven't because they feel like wearing sweatpants. I'm wearing them in a size extra small and found they come up large like a lot of Uniqlo items. These are $60 and a cotton poly blend. Another pair of pants, and these are again from the Inez de la Frassange collection. I was drawn to the herringbone pattern of the pant and the brush wool texture. These would be fab for tall girls as there's so much length through the leg. The fabric is also really thick, so a good one for winter. Honestly, I thought these were just okay. The style wasn't pushed at all, just very classic, which wasn't what I was looking for. I think I prefer them if they had more of a wide leg feel. They fit very large. I'm a 26 in jeans and I'm wearing these in a 24. They retail for $120, are 100% wool, but they have a polyester lining. I wish it was a different fabrication with the lining, but appreciate they did that extra step. I also tried on the viral nylon banana crossbody sling bag whatever you want to call it. This is super lightweight and thin, but has this slightly puffy appearance. A great dog walking bag, travel bag, easy throw on option, good if you're a mum with kids, that you maybe aren't too fussed by because it feels so carefree. And being nylon, I think you could easily wash this if it got grubby. I like that it had an adjustable strap and also it's got interior pockets. Does it feel super expensive? No, but I think it's good value from a function perspective given that the price is only $20 and it comes in loads of color options. So I'm back from my little shopping trip into the city and I have to say when I was in Coz it was actually a lot more that I wanted to try on but I limited myself to six items. There were some really beautiful coats, there was an amazing dupe for my Celine, my old Celine uh, cashmere turtleneck which I'll link that one down below, put a photo on screen thought that was lovely uh, and also a really stunning uh, thick corduroy suit so blazer and matching trousers a lot more substantial than the white corduroy trousers that I tried on and for me those would be an option if you live somewhere that was really cold. By contrast Uniqlo felt like a little bit of a letdown and I suspect this is probably because a lot of their styles tend to be static throughout the years, they bring them back in new seasonal colors and they are heavily focused on basics. So I have a lot of those staple pieces from Uniqlo already and I rate them, I think they are great. One thing I did wanna try on but couldn't find were the flat front trousers, you know, those wide leg pants, which I think are only around the $50 mark, very reasonably priced. I believe they're synthetic, uh, but they would be a great option if you're looking for an affordable style in that particular trouser cut and every single person I've seen wearing them looks absolutely sensational so uh, I would have liked to try those on but obviously not something I need. I did actually end up buying something though when I was at Uniqlo and also got something from Cos too. So from Uniqlo this was the reason why I wanted to go in there. I grabbed this nylon crossbody sling bag. I feel like this has just blown up. It is really, really affordable. It's $19.90, which was part of the reason why I didn't feel too guilty about purchasing it. Uh, I really love my La Mer crossbody bag, more so for the style of it rather than the functionality because it doesn't have an interior pocket, whereas this one, it does, which I love because it's a great way to segment things. And also because I have the small size, it is quite sort of a narrow fit and I sometimes worry about things falling out. 
This one is a much deeper bag. So I think it's gonna be a little bit more practical, has the adjustable strap. Being nylon, if it gets dirty, I can also just throw this in the washing machine, which I think is great. And I also picked up for my son, this gorgeous wee little Snoopy sweatshirt. I really quite like the kids' clothing that they have at Uniqlo. It's one of the places that I will shop for clothing for the kids, just for anyone who that might be relevant for. And then at Coz, uh, <laughs> I actually wasn't sure if they'd have this in stock. I couldn't see it on the floor, but I asked the staff and they managed to get one out for me from their downstairs stock room. I bought this knitted vest and I will do a try on as well so you can actually get a better sense of how it looks. I really love this and my friend Rose, the creative classicist over on Instagram, she has the Jill Sander one and this is very heavily inspired just down to that kind of crochet trim except this one is a cotton and polyester blend which is a very similar fabrication to the Uniqlo U 3D knitted tanks that I have which I adore. I've worn them so much and they wash incredibly well despite the synthetic component and I find them very comfortable to wear. I think it's down to the openness of the weave though this being a little bit sheerer than those so maybe it would be fun to wear with a colored bra underneath something really obvious or even just a little nude tank but i like the functionality of being able to wear it both with the v-neck in the front the way it was designed and intended to be worn or back to front like that but that was sort of something i i've been really lusting after that jill sander vest that rose has and i feel like i've kind of scratched that itch with this one here so thank you for coming shopping with me at cos and uniqlo let me know which shops you might like me to go and do this in next i hope the camera work wasn't too bad and the voiceover was all right but yeah thank you so much for spending some of your time with me and i will see you next week with a brand new video see you very soon bye <laughs>